Hello and welcome to the Intoxicated Lecturer. I am an incredibly intelligent man. I am so wise, I have a PhD in street pavements. So, let's do this. I don't actually have a street PhD in street pavements. That wasn't a lie. That was an attempt at a joke. It just didn't go very well because I was meant to say streetwise, i.e. I have a PhD in pavements. Okay, it's a joke. And not a very good one, as you can imagine. Right. Today we are discussing, after lengthy meditation in the bath, the essence of thought itself. Yes. You heard right. You heard exactly what I said. And I said we have an urban space force in the grotty think tanks of human endeavour into the world of profundity, uncovered the very innate basics of how thought itself functions. And it can be described easily in English in three words. Cognitive Associative Relay. Okay? This is extraordinary. This is so cool and clever. By the end of this lecture, you will be a changed person. So let's get to work. The point is... Let's have a sip of beer. You may think that's not very professional, but I say I'm not here to be professional. I'm here to tell you the truth without conspiracy or agenda. That's just real. So it's real. I'm having a beer whilst talking to you and giving you a nice lecture. Is that so wrong? Are you going to sue me for trying to do a good thing? Because I like to enjoy myself as I orate and educate and inform the masses of wonderful things. Wonderful things. Just got to get this little stoggy biffed up and we're ready to go. So, flying to net. Cognitive Associative Relay. What does that mean, you may well ask? Wow, it's really quite simple. Cognitive, as in the machinations of the human brain, cognition, thinking, associative, relay. So, the thought relay of your mind is associative. Associative is the key word here. It's not a crap term. It's not used lackadaisically or without care and thought. It is the precise word for how our thinking generally machinates within our mind. Let's think about it, shall we, children? If I make a picture of a tree... We have a basic tree. It's not meant to be phallic in any way. It's not a hidden code of naughtiness or perverse shenanigans. It is a tree. But why did I say that? Why did I say it's not meant to be perverse in any way? Well, I saw a bit of a pubic bush and then a severed cock, if you want to be sick about it. But I'm not being sick because it just looked like that in a very abstract way. And that's because abstract thought still relies on cognitive associative relay. It's very hard to think of something completely out of the blue and without connection to whatever the cathexis is. Okay? The cathexis. That's a very good English word. And it means something to, that you focus upon. Okay? So like in photography, you could have the subject is the cathexis of your photography. You get it? It's a great word. Sometimes there's a, C there's a CCTV company called Cathexis because that's what they do. They're looking at people through their telecommunication systems for preventing skullduggery and banditry. So here's the tree in a circle now. Now, what, when you see this, you'll all possibly think different things, but that's fine. You're meant to. That's good. That's healthy. That shows the world is free, disparate, and people are living their own independent lives subject to other people's realities. Okay? So you say a tree. Now, I can think what some of you think. You know, oh, I could do with a few apples, perhaps. So we can put in an apple. Maybe one or two. Let's do three. Make it real. So now we have an apple tree, okay? Apple tree, there are two words, okay? So we're more honed in on specifics, and therefore our imagination hones in too on a more visualized reality. What you're seeing here is obviously done pictorially for you. However, when you're reading a book, cognitive associative relay 
is the very essence of how your imagination fluctuates and goes forth, you see. It, it runs on a series of triggers and our minds are actually super fast. We can relay and process and machinate the mind very, very quickly. I'm not saying it's as quick as the speed of light, but it would stand to reason that it's as quick as the speed of electricity, which is still pretty darn fast, if not the speed of light. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not that much of a scientist. But what I do know is that the bulk of thinking, thought itself, is based on cognitive associative relay. And all those three words are important to define the phenomena that occurs within the mind. You see, the human brain is little more than a super stimu sensual stimulus pickup region and a computer biologically to organize and orchestrate the flowing of the, the body, right? But once you've got all the basic parts installed, which is hugely based on allowing us to five main senses. And yes, there could well be more than five senses, but we're going for the traditional five senses that function as our innate, normal understanding of stimulus response. And the brain is hugely just based on um, sensual stimulus response and pickup regions, okay? So you've got your sensual region, you, well, they're all sensual regions. You've got your olfactory part of your brain, you've got your ocular part of the brain, probably be right here, we're beyond, in the neo, beyond the neocortex, probably, because that's the more involved part of the new brain. But they're essentially all there to translate your stimulus, whether it be touch, smell, hearing, okay? The brain is hugely a stimulus receiver, interpreter, and then, as it as we get older and more mature and live life more and have more experiences, we have memory, which sits underneath, metaphorically, what's going on. And it is in our memory banks, and they could be called memory banks, that cognitive associative relay drops in and out rapidly of these somehow cellularly stored items of memory and imagined data. And cognitive associative relay can drop into anything very quickly depending on what the cathexis might be. Okay? So let's give a few examples. Okay, a bucket, right? What goes in the bucket? I don't know, let's say water. It's now a glass bucket, you can see through it, okay? So it's now a translucent bucket with water in it. That's associative relay because that's what, what is a bucket for? It's not for many things apart from holding shit and carrying shit. Usually liquids, sometimes solids. And vaguely that's all there is to it. But what if we go the other way? What if we just leap out? Maybe I'm thinking fish now because I just mentioned water. Right, fish. But what do you think of fish? If you're English, you might well think of fish and chips. Right? Which is a meal. So you're thinking of food. So we've gone food, liquid, food, but better food than fruit, because I personally can't stand fruit, right? So what we're just by thinking, we are improving the situation. So now we don't want food. Hey, beer, you know? This really ramp up to what we desire in life. Beer and a smoke. But why do we like beers and smokes? Well, it's because it has an effect on our mind that we consider to be pleasurable to some extent. And I don't think pleasure really is a sin. In religion, it's sometimes frowned upon to be overly pleasure and driven. But if you think about it, we're all waiting on earth to get to heaven, if you're a believer. And heaven is the ideal form of perpetual bliss and pleasure. 
So if you can, so if you can find it on earth, when a lot of the time we are barren and desperately in need of some happiness, well, I don't really think God's, God's going to scold you for having a couple of beers or smoke. Is he really going to cast you into eternal damnation and hell because you like to drink and smoke? It doesn't make sense to me. That's not a loving God to me. It doesn't say that in the Bible per se. It, it does say drunkards won't enter the kingdom, won't enter the New Jerusalem. But it doesn't say drunkards go to hell. It just says they're on the outside of the New Jerusalem when that baby visits from space, as discussed in a previous documentary. Um, so, yeah, it won't be brilliant outside of the New Jerusalem in the, in the deep future, but it'll be like Boscombe, you know, on the outskirts. And then inside it will be like Uber Royal Holy Palace for all the believers in Jesus. Anyway, I digress. And the reason I digress is because of cognitive associative relay. Right? I started talking about one thing. A went to B, which resulted in C. Okay? And C, therefore, became the new A, which triggered a new B. Let's put plus there. Which created a new C, which goes back. And then the C... Oh, it just goes on and on and on, forever until you die, right? And that is basically what is going on in the cellular part of your brain, functioning with the beauty and the divine gift of consciousness under God, painless consciousness at that, right? Which is just the, for me, painless consciousness as a schizophrenic is pretty much the holy grail of what we want in life. Because... I've had the opposite so many times, and it's horrendous, horrendous, and I wouldn't wish that on anyone, not even my worst enemies, because if, if you wish evil on people, you tend to get bitten back yourself. Um, so anyway, we have this sort of load of bollocks, really, but it's just nice to draw and talk and try to make the world a little bit of a better place, well, I just want to go out there and meet a bird, a beautiful woman with a decent set of crackers and a face to die for and a sense of humour to fall in love with and just, you know, make love to a beautiful woman. But I can't because I don't really know. <laughs> there, there are like four billion people on it. No, eight billion people, four billion of which are female and none of them really want to know me. I was like, how do you think I feel? You know what I mean? None of them really want to know me. And I'm just like out here on my own, just going, what did I do so bad, right? Oh, I've made a few cock-ups along the way. Haven't we all? I'm 49. I'm not Jesus Christ incarnate entirely himself. And even he made a few errors, probably. You just don't know, do you? You might have had a way. See, so caught one when he was a kid or something. You just don't know. Near the pyramids. So anyway, we passed on. I'm not trying to be blasphemous. It's just, it's just, it's, it's just innately human. Jesus was... The Son of God, not as some people believe God incarnate. I think that's misinterpretation of the Bible and a poor exegesis of what Jesus is trying to convey. But I do think he was a Son of God. And there are more than ones of Son of God in the Apocalypse and the Bible, as you know if you're religious. However, I don't think it's unholy to think that Jesus might have cracked one out maybe when he was a teenager. Because, you know... It would be very odd and rare for a man to live his whole life never having had an orgasm. Do you think that's possible? I know some extreme Buddhist monks might, or some extreme Orthodox Jews, I don't know. But really, is it, would, would God punish someone for using the equipment God gave them? That doesn't make sense, does it? Does it? I don't think so. So anyway, we press on. We go this way. For no real reason other than I was thinking let's go this way. And then we can arrive finally to square the whole deal and put a circle there. And I don't really know why, but why we, let's make it a clock. Associative, co cognitive associative relay. Steer a circle. You might see a face, a moon, a clock, a plate, whatever. Steering wheel. Should we turn it into a steering wheel? Or a Mercedes logo. You see? All these things come to mind just through the use of one symbol. Now the people who run the show, are aware of this. They know how this functions. And so they can control, now not in a nefarious sense, but in a way, in just in a way that makes a lot of sense. They know how to 
sway your thinking into the direction they want using symbolism and semiotic triggers. Okay? So let's just, let's just make that into a Mercedes symbol. Go on, why not? But, uh, we, can, we can even make it into a clock as well. Why not? I don't know if I've got the right number of new merits there, probably not, but there we are. So it's like now, it's a fusion, it's a mashup of a muck of a Mercedes logo with the aspects of a clock on its face. And it makes no real sense, it doesn't really help anyone, but it may illustrate to you what I'm trying to tell you. Which I think is pretty darn profound and a great breakthrough in understanding human consciousness. You may just think I'm a Barney Walnut. So anyway, that's that. Uh, cognitive Associative Relay, CAR, to use a cool acronym. And once you realise this is how your thinking is going, if you're just generally quite normal thinking, you can wield in conversation, the whole conversation, by knowing this, and standing firm and directing the flow of dialogue. Because where what you talk about will trigger responses in others. And you don't have to respond to their responses if you know this. You just hold it back and keep delivering your triggers until the conversation or whatever you want to do is going in your direction. Is that manipulation? Is it a, it's not oppression. It, it might, might be. Is, is it a manipulation? I, don't, I think it's just understanding how the brain works. And then you can get, you know, peace all the time if, by knowing this. And, and good conversations with nice people a lot of the time, knowing this. Psychos tend to think differently because of a warping in their mind, and that's why they're called psychos. But the cognitive associative relay still works, but it's happening with the added fifth dimensional element of hallucinations and voices and things like that and delusions and if you get in them which are part of the human machinations of the brain well they will warp your cognitive associative relay into supernatural levels of total god-fearing madness which I have been through myself but generally these days I'm more stable and I'm quite proud of that I'm quite thankful for that and the suicidal downturns are no way as often uh, as occurring as they used to be I do still get a little black, but um, or down in the dumps, or a little. Well, I know I get very down sometimes, but the 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 once dream of self termination is now a fleeting dream, more so than the newfound desire of hope in a more sober, father based reality, where looking after my daughter has shown shown me so many things about the beauty of life. Seeing life through my own little girl's eyes is, is priceless. You can't put money on that kind of gift from God to show you true beauty and love and sweetness in reality. And it was the best thing, thanks to Indiana Jones, that I ever did having that kid. Right? She is just adorable. And I'm so pleased. And, and that should be the end of that. And so we're all going to be amazing. We're all going to be fabulous. And there's nothing to worry about anymore, really, unless you're a douche. But even then, someone's going to come along and try and spoil the party at one point. But at that point, you say, hey dude, fuck off.